At the end of Justice League Unlimited, Darkseid is not defeated by Superman. Well, he almost does it, although Darky Barry cheats. But Lex Luthor, who walks in through the ashes in a nice suit, still bold, but with an offer. The anti-life equation, my gift to you. And they're both gone forever. Lex Luthor saves the world. And in the big picture storytelling, I'm kind of like, what the fuck? Thanks to Luthor. One man should have that much power. Lex Luthor is a character I either love or get irrationally irritated by, because he's kind of like an unchanging parasitical force, whose big cliche is that he gets away with everything, because he's just so goddamn rich. Not at all like real life. But the DCU version of it ironically gets away with it, because he's just so simply goddamn charismatic. Well, that's just dandy. All I know is your hero did nothing to help me. Clancy Brown, and then ironically, during the Brain Swap episode, Michael Rosenbaum, is kind of perfect. Oh, that is just wrong. There's a thickness to his voice, so the sense of self-made strength is very apparent, instead of just simply coming off as a rich slime ball. And because it's also literally Mr. Krabs, he's fucking hysterical. You gonna wash your hands? No. Cause I'm evil. Like the story starts out in Superman the Animated Series, as you expect. Someone who hates Superman because he wants to rule Metropolis as its savior and to start his fucking empire. Maybe he should have bought some land in Texas and opened his own schools. But Superman outshines him in terms of public appreciation, contradicting his own belief that he needs everything to revolve around him. A being with your abilities could be very useful to me. Why don't you float on in and we'll discuss it? Where all that matters is his own success and superiority. However, Lex is also a selfish prick who will always put himself over everyone else. Even if it's Mercy, the most loyal person ever in his life. These two core elements in his being, sheer cowardice and overall self-interested hubris, is what I'd argue defines the first act of his journey. The refusal of the call stage, if you will. Where the hero rejects change due to a sense of insecurity, fear and obligation. And ironically for Alexi Saxi here, this refusal to change is actually what leads him to dying. Remember that chunk of kryptonite you carried around for years? What about it? Actually, we're finding that it can affect humans too, but only if they're exposed over a long period. In Justice League, the kryptonite he kept with him at all times radiated his balls to the point of killing him, so now he needs his own arc reactor on at all times. I consider this stage the start of a second act, his trials. Lax's own mortality and fear of death is what holds power over his life. It is something he has to confront in order to change. We'll beat him, Lex. We will. This act of atonement with the father stage, if you will, is then symbolized by Amazo, an omnipotent android who he tricked to fight the Justice League. At first, it sees how utterly small and insignificant Lex is. No, please. How everything is insignificant. Then leaves. There's nothing I want from you anymore. None of you has anything to offer me now. But then in Unlimited, he returns and all the might of the entire Justice League and Green Lantern Corps can't stop him. Death is coming for Lex, but Ray Palmer is there to ironically bring him down. What are you waiting for? Just do it. Good idea. And it's upon being small, Lex begins to see clearly. What is your ultimate purpose? What you're really asking is, what is yours? He saves his own life by solving Amazo's existential dilemma and through his own hubris. What am I evolving into? What is my purpose? I must know! Tell me! There's no way to tell. And that's why I stay in the game. My purpose, if you will, is to see where it's all going. And you, you'll live forever. You'll be able to see it all. Is that my purpose? Simply to be a witness? We create our own purpose in life. Now go create yours. Lex is an arrogant, selfish dickbag, but his confidence and belief in making meaning for yourself is what precisely Amazo needed. So, he saves himself. Told you we'd beat him. What do you mean, we? 
However, this moment is not Lex's apotheosis. It's through a different person, another robo dude, Brainiac, who cures Lex of his cancer, and together they f with Superman with a fake presidential campaign. I spent seven dollars on a fake presidential campaign, all just to tick Superman off. Which is so wonderfully scary and goofy, I fucking love it. Lex builds himself an amazo body for immortality, but then Amanda Waller destroys it. A nano disassembler beam, your design. He calls her an arrogant cow. Arrogant cow! Which is, like, really rude. Subsequently, Lex's relationship with Brainiac is the moment he achieves a sort of wisdom through reconciling with the opposites of his life. After escaping, Lex asks Brainiac his future plans. Brainiac just wants to accumulate all knowledge, but he lacks purpose. I repeat the process across the entire universe until I have recorded all knowledge and destroyed all of creation. And then... But Lex has the ego to use it. I'm offering you the one thing you've always lacked. Imagination. I've got a proposition for you, partner. And to earn Brainiac's trust, he offers to merge himself for the achievement of godhood. To an extent, to share himself. But if you and I are one, trust won't be an issue, will it? Agreed. He begins to break free from his own selfishness to a short extent. I am in here, and I like it. I'm about to get everything I ever wanted. Power, ultimate knowledge, immortality. However, Flash beats his naked ass and is all over. Brainiac now exists in Lex's bold head as a guide to becoming godlike again, but also as his only friend. Bring you back to life. Yes, we could be together again. Brainiac, I'm coming. Where even as Lex joins Grodd's Legion of Doom and usurping him and having Tyler's personal simp, he places failsafes on everyone to protect his own ass. That's how you know I'm Luthor. Everyone are just simply tools to him. Tools for Lex to resurrect Brainiac. That's all he fucking wants. If you like this world so much, keep your fool mouth shut. And maybe I'll let you keep it. Me. I'm going to be a god again. But as he is about to, he gets fucked over by Tala, which brings about a Brainiac slash dark side mix. As a result, Lex must also put aside his own ego, his own fear of death by siding with the League as the world ends. You've got some nerve coming to us for help. Darkseid took Brainiac away from me. I can't hear his voice in my head anymore. It's very subtle, but the Lex here, who is still an arrogant asswipe who's completely self-obsessed, only a 12th level intellect has the slightest hope of surviving. Then I'm overqualified. The action he has here are ones that he would never would have made at the start of the story. To side with Superman, a man who he hated, but also went to his funeral to pay respects for. Believe it or not, I'm going to miss him too. Who stopped being a coward and stared his own death in the face and turned his back away from it. He was ready to share his existence with someone else for greater existential ambitions. This is a different man. This is the master of the two worlds. There is one possibility, one thing in all the universe that might Risk. I know a little something about risk myself. Care for an object lesson? The transcendence of being able to achieve balance between the inner and the outer through self-annihilation, through giving up personal limitations. Lex isn't just fighting for himself, but also for Brainiac too. Even if he saw Brainiac as a tool, that attachment stemmed deeper to the point that's what he screams at Darkseid. You destroyed Brainiac! I'm going to make you pay! So with Metron, he solves the anti-life equation and sacrifices himself to stop Darkseid by offering it. They are both then absorbed into the source wall. Everything, everyone, are saved. In many ways, Lex Luthor represents the worst mankind has to offer. But he died saving us all. I doubt that either of them died. We saw it this time. Lex Luthor is saving the world. The truth is, for all my struggles to make my mark in life, for all I've accomplished, in just a few short generations my name will be forgotten. Even the greatest of us can't compete with time and death. I think we're all a bit like Lex Luthor. I know I especially feel like him whenever I shed hair and sometimes look at my own reflection and say, I like money.
Um, I was gonna say something for the mid credits bit, but um, no, I got nothing. <laughs> It is extremely unlikely that your inferior human intellect has anything to offer me. Since we've become so close, I'm gonna let that pass. <laughs> <laughs>